جبلي يا ماما جبلي حلق الألمس ردو يلبقلي جبلي وجبلي يا ماما جبلي حلق الألمس ردو يلبقلي حكيتو شي لا والله تنطو شي لا والله حكيتو شي لا والله زعلتو شي لا والله وانا لعندو رايحة وجبلي وجبلي يا ماما جبلي طوق اللولو ريتو يلبس جبلي وجبلي يا ماما جبلي طوق اللولو ريتو يلبس حكيتو شي لا والله زعلتو شي لا والله حكيتو شي لا والله زعلتو شي لا والله وانا لعندو رايحة حكيتو شي لا والله حكيتو شي لا والله وانا لعنده رايحة وعصاري حي يا صالحة Thank you Thank you Thank you One more One more One more One more In Syria, one more means two more. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> uh, we're going to finish up uh, this set with a uh, very famous tune made famous by Feirouz called Nasam Alena Al Hawa. تعرفني بلادي خدني 
So again, welcome to uh, Fall Fundraiser, VRP Fall Fundraiser, Syria, the far, close country. We're so grateful that so many of you came out tonight in support of our event and in support of refugee resettlement in Vermont. Thank you so much. I would like to ask for a moment of silence to remember all the lives lost due to war and forceful displacement. Thank you. I would like to take a moment and uh, thank our sponsors, Shelburne Farms, for um, opening this magical space to us second year in a row. Thank you so much. <laughs> then I would like to ask all the volunteers, the cooks, the servers, the people who set up this beautiful room, the staff of VRP, to sort of wave Please wave. <laughs> our work, our work, and uh, this event would not be possible if it wasn't for the support of, of volunteers and of all of you. So thank you so very much. Um, I would like to thank the state of Vermont and uh, 
particularly the cities of Burlington and Winooski and surrounding areas for supporting refugee resettlement, for continuing to support refugee resettlement. Um, for over 35 years, 7,000 refugees have been resettled in Vermont, if you didn't know, since 1980s, from Afghanistan, Bosnia, Burundi, Bhutan, Burma, Kosovo, Iraq, Somalia, Sudan, Vietnam, just to name a few. Our hope for this year, fiscal year 2016, which for us started on October 1st, is to resettle refugees from Syria. The United States has recently increased the projection uh, for 2016 from 70,000 to 85,000. Refugee advocates are asking for 100,000 Syrian refugees to be, to be admitted on top of that. And we're hoping to see some arrive to Vermont. Refugee resettlement offers Vermonters an opportunity to take action for human rights. Annually, we resettle about 350 refugees, which is the plan for next year as well. Tonight, as you know, our focus is on Syria, on the culture and people of Syria. Before the war, Syria's population was 22 million. 10 million were displaced due to war. Half the country, either internally or externally. Four million Syrians are in neighboring countries, in Jordan, Turkey, and Lebanon. And more and more Syrians, as we all can see in the media, are running uh, towards Western Europe. The United States historically has resettled the most number of refugees out of all other refugee resettlement countries combined. And we have a responsibility to resettle more. Only 1,500 have arrived so far. We have a responsibility to resettle more. So I would like to take a moment and thank our panelists, Ashraf, Yola, Anwar, Nagam, and Maha, to sharing their beloved Syria with us tonight, for sharing their culture, their language, their dress with us tonight. They will each take about five to 10 minutes and then we will have question and answer session at the end. All right. So at this point, I would like to turn things over to Ashraf Alamatori, and I would like to ask each one of them to introduce themselves in more detail. Hello, thank you very much for coming. My name is Ashraf Alamatori, and I'm the English Language Learning Coordinator at VRRP USCRI. Uh, uh, today, uh, uh, we will speak about uh, a journey to Syria. So this journey is, as um, André Barreau, uh, the director of Louvre, said that each civilized person in the world should admit that he has two home countries, the one he was born in and Syria. So our journey today is we start with the heart. We are going with our hearts to Syria. That makes Syria from Vermont to Syria, our journey by hearts <laughs> to make Syria <laughs> the far close country. So if we speak about size, so, comparing to this, uh, one of the states of the United States, Syria is uh, approximately the same size of Washington state. So, in Syria, it has 7,000 years of history, of culture. So, sometimes when we, we visited some cities, you, you'll find that it's layers of culture. It's, 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 uh, the question is, is not, is there an ancient culture, but how many ancient cultures in that place? 
from Aleppo to Palmyra to Damascus, from Umayyad Mosque to Bosra. This is Syria. So today I will speak about my own journey. I will speak about my hometown, which is south of Syria. So my hometown is as Suweda. It's south of Damascus. So Suweda has a, a long and rich history. It started with the alphabet. It started before even we think about the alphabet. It started with Emperor Philippos, who ruled Rome in the ancient ages, and who called his, his, his hometown Philippos. So Suweda is, is a kind of um, a mountainian area which is really, the air there is, is very clear and the uh, uh, weather is very nice. So it's not hot and it's not cold. Although in winter we get a lot of, hot, of, of snow. So also in, in Suweda there's Kanatha, one of the metropolitan cities uh, where the <coughs> ways of trade have to go th across Kanatha. Suweda was very famous with grapes. As, as you see that it's thousands of years ago, the grapes were really a famous uh, plant there. And even we have in Suweda a kind of statue for grape. So in 1925, Sultan Bash al-Atrash who was the general leader for the Syrian revolution in 1925. And it was against the French occupation at, at that time. Sultan Bash al-Atrash, who belongs to a minority in Syria, he brought all the Syrians behind him, with him, to define the country. And he has one saying. He said that the religion is for God but the land is for all the people, for all the Syrians. So in Suweda, religion and culture goes to harmony. So we have never asked ourselves before what's the difference between religion or cultures. So we have the Druze population, the Christian population, and the Muslim population, all of them lives in harmony. So also my, my journey was um, a little bit long. So it started from Suweda to Damascus where I studied there. And also to Deir Atiyah, where I was a teacher at uh, University of Kalamon. So where I really enjoyed teaching and enjoyed teaching my students, which I re still remember them. And I hope they are all safe. Unfortunately, I do not have a mean to communicate with them anymore. Also to Hems, the city which is, I, 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 I had my first master there. Uh, and to Arraka, where I started my career as a teacher there. Arraka, one of the most beautiful cities I, I have visited in, in my life. One story happened with me when I was there. I coming from a very different city, very different culture from the south, and I went to Arraka. And somebody in the bus said that, are you a teacher in one of our schools? And the ruler said, yes. He said, you don't have to pay. It's on me. We don't have any people who are going to help us have to pay anything. And also, I, 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 I um, shared my teacher training in a uh, beautiful area, coastal area of Tartus. Tartus, which is really, uh, as any part of Syria, has a, a, a long uh, history, and they were the Phoenician. 
who believed that the Ibid may be the first Syrian they, they reach the continent. You know. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Yula Hanna. Thank you for coming here. I really appreciate all of you coming to support the Syrian people. Uh, I was born in Damascus, Syria, and I studied and graduated from Damascus University as a civil engineer there uh, in 1983. I got married and came to the US in 1988. I settled in uh, Belmont, Massachusetts. Uh, I have three daughters. The oldest one graduated uh, from uh, Fairfield University as a nurse. Uh, she, uh, she went, uh, while she was in school, she went on a service trip to Jamaica uh, to help there in a hospital. She started helping, she, they asked her to take the temperature of people there. She did, and some of them had high temperature. So she started writing. They said, no, 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 just put it normal. She said, what? But they have temperature. They need medication. They didn't have medication. No, no medication whatsoever. So she was very upset. She said, why am I here if I can't help them? They said, the human touch, that's what they need. They need to know that people love them and care for them and come to see them. That would help them even though they don't have, you know, you don't have the proper medication for them, but at least you're supporting them. After being there for 10 days, she decided, okay, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to Africa for two years and help people there, and she did. She just came back last year, and she's working in Boston area. My second daughter, Maha, who's here, she graduated from U UVM University last year. <laughs> and you are, I, I'm sorry, can I just ask you to get closer to the mic? Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. And I have a third daughter, her name is Yara, she's a senior in high school. Uh, when Maha asked me to come here to speak about Syria, I was thinking, what am I gonna say about Syria? There are so many things to say. Should I speak about the, the history of Syria, the culture that you're experiencing now? What should I say? So I asked my friends, which, you know, I've been in contact with since everything started. I said, what do you think the most important thing that people need to know about Syria? They said, the people of Syria. We need, we want them to know about the people of Syria. Just talk about the people. I said, okay. So, uh, one of my cousins who, like I haven't heard from for 30 years, uh, like we started talking on Facebook, and <laughs> he, t he said, tell them about the people, about how we lived with each other for thousands of years in harmony. We didn't have wars between us. Tell them how my grandmother, when she used to cook, she would take a plate for her neighbors every time so they, she would share the food with them. I said, I remember that. And I remember your mother, because my father came from Latakia, which is the coastal, other coastal city, from a little town, a uh, little village called Mzera. Uh, he came from a poor family, but even though they weren't like wealthy, every time we go to visit in the summer, women like my aunts used to fight who wants to take us for lunch or dinner or they would like, no, you have to come to us. You have, I still remember that. I still remember all the love that they gave us. It stuck with me and still with me. So I want to tell you about the people of Syria. 
Uh, I want to talk to you also about some of the people who uh, my, uh, dealt, you know, through this war, like had to go through a lot. One of them is one of my friends from Dara, which is the first city that uprised uh, in south, uh, south of Syria. He has uh, six children. Uh, they lived in a small house, uh, very happy uh, life. But then his house uh, kept getting hit with bombs and so they, were, they would leave their house, then when everything settled, they'd go back. But one day they were sleeping and their house, like a big uh, bomb, hit the building. So they had to flee. Luckily, none of his children got injured, or, but he had to take them to his sister's house. And then they kept moving from one place to the other until they ended up in uh, Jordan. Uh, they lived there for three years as a refugee, and finally, last month, they got resettled in France. When he got there, the mayor of the city that he went to came and, you know, congratulated them on coming to France with the chief of police. So he wanted to thank the mayor, and the mayor kept holding his hand. He wouldn't let go. He wanted to say hi to the chief of police, but the mayor wouldn't let go of his hand. He kept holding his hand until he finished talking. He said, that's the first time I feel I'm a human. That's the first time someone treats me as a human being. But even though he's safe there with his family, and now he knows they're gonna have a better future, sometimes, you know, just going through all what they went through, it just sometimes he feel like depressed and sad and that they lost everything, like all their lives got shattered. So he wrote something and posted it. I would like just to share it with you if you don't mind. He said, Every day you get phone calls from some people you know and some you don't, asking you about yourself, your family, and about the conditions you live in. They expect you to be happy, thankful for your new life. They seem surprised if you don't, if you don't show excitement and happiness. I don't deny all of the facts that I'm in but I am a human before anything else. I am in my autumn years. My leaves are falling down. I need time to fit in, to be satisfied. I need time to lift my broken spirit. I need time for my open wounds to heal. I need time to adjust and integrate to a new society that if I can, don't forget I might be drawn deeper and deeper into depression because of my broken spirit, and I might be feeling more and more my age. Of course, it, it makes me happy to see the changes in my children's lives, uh, to see the doors open for a better future. But about myself, it is not shame or an appreciation or a crime to feel this way. I am a human and cannot be but myself. That's how my history, my country made me. I can't be like water that takes the shape of a vessel when the vessel replaces. I am talking about myself, so please don't blame me. I just want to tell you that's how a lot of refugees might feel. Even though they, they have new life, better future for them, for their children. But what they went through is very hard and they need support. They need a human touch. That's all they need. So please keep that in mind. Thank you. And 
finally, I would like to tell you about my sister-in-law. She told me, please tell everyone about the people who stayed in Syria, people who's dealing with all the situation, uh, about the bombs, the muscles that go near them every day, about how expensive life is, about uh, how they live with no electricity most of the time and no water. We need their support. We want the help to stop this war. We, win, we want everybody to get out of Syria. We want to rebuild our lives and our country. Thank you. So Anwar will be speaking to us in Arabic. We have an interpreter, Ahmed Al Saidi, our uh, BRP employment counselor. Uh, welcome. Arabic, Ahlan wa Sahlan, Bikum, Jamian. Anna Ulidit Bihai Janub Dimashk, Bihai Fi Juan al Messihi, Juan al Yahud, Juan al Druz, Juan al Shia. I was born, um, uh, I was born uh, in a city. Uh, in southern Damascus, uh, in a city where uh, Christians, uh, Shia, uh, Druze, uh, and everybody lives Jewish, in it. Jewish, Jewish, Jewish. Uh, and Jewish people too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. Uh, I, I, wa I was young, and I was young, my mother, in me, tell me with my brother. Just my mother, she has it, two boys. Number one, number last. Yeah. Tell me, 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 tell على دينه الله عينه نحن دول إنسان لازم نحب بعضنا نحكي مع بعضنا وربينا على الأساس. So uh, and my mother always told me that uh, our neighbors are Christians, Jewish, uh, Druze, and Shia, and we all are creation of God, and we all have to love each other. نقطة ثانية بدي أحكي عن أحياء دمشق. أحياء دمشق القديمة كتير حلوة ضيقة معانا بعضها. And I want to talk about the neighborhood uh, in Damascus. They are all close to each other. They are all narrow. They are all like hugging each other. Any person he is, يعني he he is no good. يعني أيام I want to go. أيام I'm sorry. I went uh, <laughs> seven years here. What to Kun and Zalan Bruha la Jawara de Mesk la Kadime Bishar Bira Hajidan. When I'm upset, I just go and walk the street of Damascus and I feel really satisfied. بدي أحكي عن البيت الدمشقي القديم. I want to talk about the old Damascus houses. كانوا من أول الرجل والمرأة ما يطالع أولادهم لبرا يجوزون عندهم بالبيت سبعة عشر غرفة سبعة عشر غرفة ساحة كبيرة. فيها شجر نانرج فيها شجر كبار فيها دالية عنب فيها بحرة 
So a, a, a typical uh, old Damascus houses, they don't let their uh, children um, get married outside of the house. Uh, they usually have about 17 rooms in one house and a big hall open uh, in, uh, in the middle of the house has trees um, uh, and has also a found big fountain in the middle. You know, could be. You eat, could be. You could be. بدها تعزم جيرانها بتساوي كبه بتعزم سبعه سته جيرانها نسوان بيشتغلوا بالبرغل باللحمه بيدقوا اللحمه كانوا يدقوها بالجرن اسمه جرن دمشقي قديم يدقوها بيساووا يعني يتعاونوا مع بعضهم بيسالوا عن بعضهم بيحبوا بعضهم. So uh, a Syrian woman would invite her uh, neighbors and they would come and make, uh, and make kuppi, uh, the kind of food that you just ate. Uh, and they work on the dough, uh, and they work on the stuffing, uh, and they um, uh, 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 make it in a, in a, uh, a mortar uh, that will uh, make the dough in it. Yes, kuppi, jirin kuppi. Al jirin, al kuppi. Uh, about the uh, mu music, a uh, woman in Damascus, uh, every day of the day, they talk to each other, they talk to each other, every day of the day, they talk to each other, they do a company called Istiqbal. Every Wednesday, um, a bunch of... Um, a uh, Syrian woman would gather around and they uh, make um, like a music uh, uh, event. Dance. Yeah, and they bring a band and uh, they call it Istiqbal. Uh, they talk, have fun, dance, and play music. Name uh, Raqsa City. The Raqsa City, the uh, the uh, piece of music that he just uh, played. المهم عطينا كن صورة عن دمشق وإن شاء الله تعجبكم وشكرا لحضوركم. Thank you, thank you. We talked about uh, Damascus and uh, I hope you uh, uh, like it and thank you for coming over.